morning at 9.30 for Sunday Joy on 1370 AM, 96.3 FM. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! Twenty-five minutes before eleven o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Um, we're, not, we're, we're trying to remember if our next guest has been with us before. I, it so, sure seems like she's been with us before. Um, I, I want to tell you this: my, my own my Mother's Day is coming up on on Sunday, right? My, my mother was an immigrant, a three-year-old immigrant, nineteen twenty-eight. So it goes way back. Yep. And grow, she, by the time uh, the, the World War II stuff had happened, uh, she was already a teenager. I mean, is that right? Would that be right? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, and she was a German immigrant. So, of course, we're at war with Germany. And my grandparents, have, being very German, and my mother being more New York than German because she grew up in New York, but she was three, you know, so. So she had her her share of stories from people who, um, you know, just kind of labeled them because they were German, and uh, and and of course they had nothing at all to do with the with what was going on as far as the the government of Germany. In fact, they had long been gone since that all started, or since before that started. But even even when it starts, you know, we we've we've become pen pals with people in uh, in the Middle East who are, are part of the circumstances happening over there, and they're just as sweet as can be. They have nothing to do with some of the stuff that's going on. So sometimes the news kind of um, you know, gives us a, an interesting, a different light on a, on a country and, and on a p- group of people than what is really accurate. And I, and I think that's what this speaks to here, this next book. The book is called It Ain't So Awful Falafel. It's based on the experiences of our guest. Let me take a shot at pronouncing her name. Firuze Dumas, I think, or maybe you don't say the S. She's a humorist, and absolutely she is. She's an historian. She's an award-winning, best-selling author. She's a commentator on NPR, a contributor to the New York Times, the Los Angeles Times, the Wall Street Journal, Good Housekeeping. We think she's been on with us before, but we're not 100% mm-hmm. sure about that. Good morning, Firuze Dumas, and, and please correct me when I'm saying your name. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. So thank you. And yes, I have been on, on your show before. Oh, good, good, good. And how did I do with your name? You know, you did well. I mean, if we're going to be really picky, it's a French name. And, you know, if you ever took French, you remember the S at the end is silent, so it's Dumas. But du- we're not being picky. Dumas. Oh, I like that. But people call you people call you Cindy, or is that the mm-hmm. character? No. That's the character, right? No, that's the character. Okay. But, yeah. but but did your friends call you something else when you when you went to Newport Beach? Well... You know, I actually did change my name because at the time my name was Fibuze Jazeridi, which is pretty much a conversation ender. <laughs> so I changed my name to Julie. Oh, okay, okay. But, but, but in the, uh, the novel that I wrote, the character changes her name to Cindy because of Cindy Brady. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and, I and, love and, that Brady Bunch and, reference. And, and so, and so, is when we read the book, uh, do, are we getting an idea of what you went through? Yes. Yes. <laughs> you know, it's a, it, it's, a, it's a work of historical fiction. So the history is absolutely correct. And so you read the book and you learn a whole bunch of about U.S.-Iran history of the late 70s, early 80s. But what you're also getting is the story of what I went through, but in a fictionalized form. And I, I made it fiction because I wanted to make some composite characters and I wanted to just change a, f- a few details. But w- what the character goes through is, is what I went through. Really, and and somebody else could have taken that same story and made it serious. You did it in such a lighthearted way that it's very uh, ador- adorable. Is a bad word. What am I looking for here? It's very um, har- insightful. Adorable is a good word. We can go with that. Do you like adorable? Okay, it is adorable because you feel warm toward okay, t- toward it. Okay. Okay. Well, you know, here's the thing. Uh, I, you know, I, I'm an Iranian immigrant to the U.S. I'm, I am an American citizen. How old were you when you I moved here? I was very fortunate because I had such a great experience as, a, as, an, as an immigrant. I mean, we, we had so many experiences of people being so kind to us and so good to us. Yes, there was also some horrible stuff being said about Iranians. And, and of course, you know, we were in America when the hostages were taken um, mm. in 1979. So there yeah. was this huge anti-Iranian sentiment. Yes, that was all there. But the truth is that in our community, we were treated so well. And 
I can't help but be adorable. I mean, that's just that, you know, it's those people that created me. Okay, okay. Well, good. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that word works. And Robin says insightful. Robin likes the, the adjective insightful to describe the book, and I think that's true, too. Well, I think, you know, when it comes to the Middle East, the conversation uh, is just a soundbite, and the only I I Middle Easterners that are ever known in America are the really horrible, horrible ones. <laughs> right, right. I mean, there's never a segment on the evening news that says, and now we're going to talk to a well-adjusted Middle Eastern immigrant that you would actually like. See, there is no segment like that in the news, so this is why we have to write books. Yeah, oh boy, that's so well said. And and if you, I don't know if you could hear the intro, but my mom, my mom and her family went through that too in the in the 40s. Mm -hmm. Right, and and you know, and it, that that you know, the the irony is that people come to America as, as immigrants because they're escaping the horror of whatever's going on yeah. in, in their in their homeland. Yeah. So you know, when we were in America and the hostages were taken, you know, people would ask us like, "What do you think of the hostage situation?" and We'd always think, what do you what do you think we think? Like, it's it's awful. So what was it? Like, was you know, it to us that was obvious, but you yeah, know, it's clearly not so much to everyone. So was the the decision to move to California some, uh, your own, or did your the mom and dad decide to go to California? Well, actually, it was my father's job that brought us originally to to the United States. He, my father, was an engineer, and he came to America to help an American company build an oil refinery in Iran. So we came here originally temporarily for two years, and then we went back to Iran, and then we came back for, for him to work on the same assignment. And then we were here when the revolution happened, so we ended up staying. Oh, okay. I uh, really like the fact that you wrote this as a book for young readers. I mean, adults really will enjoy this book, too. But what, but what you have done by um, uh, addressing the younger audience is that you've opened up this line of communication between the uh, uh, younger people and the adults in the world because sometimes adults won't talk about heavy topics and you've made this heavy topic right. light you know i always hope that that my books all three of them i hope that they, they start people talking to one another and oftentimes my books have been used in community reads programs they're used in schools all over the country and that makes me incredibly happy that People read the book and that it resonates with them and it brings up something that they want to talk to, talk about. Because I don't think we're talking with each other enough anymore. No, and, exactly. And we need to do that a lot more. We, we do, we do. And I, I had hope for the whole world when Facebook came out because I thought this is going to be the thing that gets kids in Iran talking to kids in America going to get kids in, in Iraq talking to kids in, in England. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to unite because the kids are the ones who are going to change the world. They're not going to buy all the stuff yeah, that the older absolutely. politicians are, are throwing mm -hmm. at them, but I, d I don't know if it's working or not. Yeah, you know, the Internet, it's, it's kind of a mixed bag. I mean, there's, there's a lot of good. I mean, I think that, uh, you know, a lot of good ideas spread through the Internet, but, you know, a lot of not so good stuff, too. It's... Um, and also, keep in mind that a lot of countries don't have access to free speech. So just because, you know, there's, there, you know kids you know, in, in Iran can't necessarily say what they want to say on yeah, the Internet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me ask you about free speech. Okay. So, in, in the book, Cindy is talking to her dad about the cat scratching her and about the dog licking. <laughs> so, <laughs> and she, sa she says, give me an example. I love that. Give me an example, yeah. Dad. Ah, that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter, he says. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Uh, is that. Is that how you are, too? You always, somebody makes a claim, you say, well, give me an example. And then they go, oh, I don't have, they, yeah. they weasel their way out well, of it. You know, this, this is the thing. I was always a kind of kid. First of all, this is really a... Uh, one of the cultural differences that I, I, I talk about in the book. You know, I come, I come from a country where, you know, I never knew anybody who had a pet. You know, we didn't keep, like, cats and dogs inside. Oh, really? When, when, I, when we came to America, you know, people had, like, dogs and cats, and, and they were treated so well, and, and like, we went to the supermarket, and there was a whole aisle of food for cats and dogs. <laughs> and my dad would say, my God, you know, I wish I were a dog in this country. This is fabulous. I mean, there's this varieties of food and, <laughs> you know most countries in the world dogs and cats have to just rely on finding whatever they find to eat so but you know in, in the book you know the cindy's always asking her father sort of one too many questions and i was definitely that kid okay i was always the kid who was just who wanted to know why and i remember the adults would just say to me just because <laughs> just because think, well that's yeah. not you know that's not a good answer <laughs> well your your dad was a a uh, fulbright scholar so you had some huge shoes to fill when you began embarking on yeah. your writings 
Right. And, you know, the thing is with my, with my father, uh, my father actually spent a year at Texas A&M in 1953, and he came back to Iran just in love with democracy and jello and ham, and, and he <laughs> had just all these wonderful ideas about women being educated. And that one year at Texas A&M really, t- really changed him, and it, and it made him, I think, the father that, that he was to me. So I'm very grateful to the Fulbright Foundation. Wow, that is absolutely amazing because it is so wonderful to have different perspectives on things and not tunnel vision. Uh, oh, absolutely. And, that, and you know, that's true for the entire world. I mean, we have, there's so many stereotypes about Americans that aren't true, so many stereotypes about Iranians that aren't true. And, you know, the only way we're going to actually get to the truth is we, we need to talk to one another, we need to read books, you know, we need, we need to have conversations. Well, the, the beautiful thing about being a melting pot is that we do have those conversations more, well, it's, it's easier to, it's more likely to happen, you know, and, and you're in, right, what's right. It, what city in California are you, are you in Whittier? Is that what it said? Well, I, I originally, when we came to America, uh, we landed in Whittier, California, and it was actually the time when Nixon was president, and he's from Whittier, so we felt that we had landed in sort of the, the London of America. <laughs> okay. Uh, and where do you and, live now? And then from Whittier, we ended up moving to Newport Beach, and then from then, I then moved to UC Berkeley, and then I lived in Palo Alto, so California is always in my home. And California is a melting pot of the melting pot. Just, in other words, a lot oh of people... God, I, I, it's fabulous. Yeah, a lot of people from the world go to New York and come to the East Coast, and, and I guess a lot of Asians go to the, to the West Coast. But, but California and New York, in a way, are places people from all over the country go to. So you have the melting pot of the melting pot. So you have everybody there. And, and, and the same thing is here in Florida as well, I think, because so many people move here, but they're older by the time they get here. <laughs> and, yeah. <laughs> uh, and also, I'm mean, going to say one thing about Florida, because I've, I've spoken at universities there. You know, thank God for immigrants because that they bring that food with them. I oh, love visiting Florida. It's what <laughs> we say all the time. Food is, is it's unbelievable. What, we had we had a lady on the other day, and she was let's see, she was Muslim, and then she married a Christian, and then she, no, 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 she was Muslim. She converted to Christianity and married a Jew. And I yes. said, oh, you must have the best food. In- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Except for that gefilte fish, you can do away with yeah. that. <laughs> I don't even know what that doesn't look like a fish to me. I don't know why. You know, I'm I'm married to a Frenchman, and you know we lived in California for many many years, and the, just the food in California. I mean, uh, on any given day, you pick what do you want: Vietnamese food? Are you in the mood for sushi? Do you want, you know, barbecue? You know, southern barbecue. It is everything is there, and I think food is just one of those things. You know, it's like humor. It just connects us. You know, we can all sit down and enjoy a meal. Right. We can all sit down and laugh together. It's um. But I, I got to tell you, I love love being in places where there's lots and lots of diff- different types of, of restaurants and ethnic foods, and not to be taken for granted because that does not exist everywhere. So I'm, I'm, I don't know if I'm separating you from your character or not, but in the book, speaking of food, there was a scene. It was Thanksgiving, and you had cereal. Your father had no money. Did you guys go through a poor period, or no? Well, it's, it's not that it's not that it's in that scene. It's not that we didn't have money. It's that uh, she was she was. In the character that the mother uh, doesn't, you know, she, she's depressed about what's going on. She misses her family, so she doesn't cook anything. And in fact, an ongoing theme in the book is how Cindy, the character, wants to have a traditional Thanksgiving meal like she sees in Good Housekeeping magazine, but her mom just, just doesn't go for it. So every Thanksgiving, it's like the same. Oh, you know, she oh okay. Pictures in the magazine. <laughs> okay. She really wants. Oh but no, that's like too sad. Up making like lamb shanks with dill. Oh, okay. You know, wow. But that so that wasn't you. That was your character, or or was it? No, Did, that was a character in the book. Okay, okay. That's that is funny. So are you are you um are you tying tying with the idea, or have you worked? Let's see. You've got a lot of great credentials. I mean, have you submitted some of your stuff so we could see you on, or you're writing like on a comedy? I don't know if you want to write for a sitcom. Sometimes sometimes talent gets lost in a sitcom. Yeah, you know, um, I have actually never done that, although uh, my first book, Funny and Farsi, was turned into a TV pilot by NBC. It was not picked up. It was not picked up, unfortunately. I think it was a little too soon. I think I, I'm, I'm a little too ahead of the curve. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. And since then, ABC has made some other ethnic shows that are really funny. But um, you got to be in them. I mean, you... you I, think, I think it was... I think it'd I'm be sorry? I think it'd be funny if you were in them. You know, like the lady who did the uh, the big fat Greek wedding. Oh yeah, my big fat Greek wedding. I mean, wedding. Right, she, right. she represented her own writing, right? right? Um, yes. 
Well, I'm ready for my close-up, Mr. DeMille. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'd be perfect. I mean, just I, I love the way you, you're speaking uh-huh. and, and the way you look. Where's your picture again? I know you're a good-looking lady. There you are. Yeah, look yeah, at you. I don't even look, yeah, you have to do, like, age progression on those author photos. <laughs> <laughs> That's, where are you? It's, it looks like it's snowy in those pictures. Is that winter? Actually, I am currently in Munich, Germany. Temporary, temporary. Oh, you're in Germany right now? Right now. Oh, that's that's why there's a little bit of a delay in the phone. Nice. Okay. Well, of course, that's, that, that doesn't mean anything because we get delay sometimes with the guy around the corner. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Firuze Duma, don't go away. Do not do not go away because we have a commercial but we, we, and we'll I be back. I will not go away. Okay. Well, we'll be right back after this. <laughs> The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Say boating is no accident. Intervals of clouds and sun warm and humid on this Tuesday with a couple of showers and a thunderstorm arriving this afternoon over the interior to high 85 to 89. It'll be mostly cloudy through the night with a couple of showers and a thunderstorm, though 67 inland, 73 on the coast. Periods of rain Wednesday, some of it heavy, and a thunderstorm, the high 77 to 81. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm Joe Lundberg. The sound of the bat cracking, the crowd cheering, the smell of overpriced but tasty hot dogs, the memories that will last a lifetime of your first baseball game with little Johnny. Your team wins. It was a great night until you get home. It's 9 p.m. and your wife says you have no water. We have no water. What do you do? What do you do? Rule number one, don't panic. Remain calm. Okay, that's two rules. We don't have time for jokes, funny man. Okay, think back. On the way home, you heard a radio commercial. Mike Scott Plumbing. If water runs through it, we do it. Eureka. You saved the day. You remembered that Mike Scott Plumbing doesn't charge extra for nights, weekends, or holidays. You are a genius. Hey, Mr. Genius, did you remember the phone number? Of course you did. Remember, you're a genius. 352-237-2888. Because at Mike Scott Plumbing, if water runs through it, we do it. Even if water's not running through it at this particular moment. Mike Scott Plumbing. That was the sound of a tree falling. It could be your tree. You're going to have it trimmed, but never got around to calling Pride Tree Service. It could have fallen in a field, and now all you have to do is call Pride Tree Service, and they'll have it quickly out of the way for a great price. But don't wait until the tree falls. It may not fall in the field. It may hit your car, your house, or worse. So call Pride Tree Service today and avoid all those headaches before they happen. Pride Tree Service, 572-2510. That's 572-2510. All right, eight minutes before 11 o'clock, and we're having a really good conversation. Firuze Duma, Duma is on the phone, and uh, her book is called It Ain't So Awful Falafel, based on the experiences of Firuze Duma. Uh, have to, I have to say your name slowly so I get it right, I, and I hope I am. Combining an accurate history of U.S. and Iran relations in an entertaining novel for young adults. We have some Iranian uh, people who live here in Ocala, by the way. I think there's Iranians everywhere. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we know them. I mean, Robin and I are friends with them. I'm just, I, uh, I'm sure you're right. Uh, you have something called the uh, Falafel Kindness Project that you are involved with. Right. So basically, you know, one of the themes that runs through this book is just kindness and how, what, what, how life-changing that is. And I think, you know, so much conversation these days about bullying in schools, and I don't think the conversation has helped anything. I think we should be talking about kindness. Because that's something that everybody can do. Just a small act of kindness can make such a difference in someone's day. So I started something called the Falafel Kindness Project. And when you read the book, you understand what it is. And it's basically, you know, I'm inviting people to share their falafel kindness story of what they've done um, in their school or in their classroom to make a difference. So I'm hoping to just have like a whole movement going. Well, how about if we bring a, a plate of falafel? I don't think I've ever had a falafel, no, by the way. I never have. I've seen the word. Do you put an S? Had a falafel? How is this possible? <laughs> See, you get it all your life. And <laughs> I don't know. Assignment then for today. You have to go eat a falafel. And, w- and w- I had to look it up. I didn't know what it was. I, I don't know what it is. It, well, it looks like a beepo. <laughs> 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 it's, it's like a fried, it's like a fried garbanzo bean combo, it, and it's delicious. I mean, everybody loves the falafel. It's just it looks it's good. I, I looked it up. It says falafel is a deep fried ball or patty made from ground chickpeas. 
<laughs> you know, like, this description doesn't sound mouth-watering, but it really is. And plus, like, there's stuff that goes on it, so it's really good. Hey, by the way, one thing I do want to tell your listeners, uh, <laughs> It Ain't So Awful Falafel is actually perfect for uh, use in the classroom for middle school, and there's a study guide that goes with it that is available for free on my website, which is seriesaduma.com. And there's a bunch of videos, educational videos, that go with the book. All right. So it's a really fun destination, but very educational. Right. I, I, we have a question about the cover of the book. Is In the car, is that a vacuum cleaner or a golf club? So what's coming out of the back yes, window? it's a vacuum cleaner sticking out. A vacuum cleaner. And what does that mean? Well, the, the story starts out, and Cindy's family is moving, and the car is packed. And oh, the okay. And the handle is sticking out. Okay. The thing is, my, my father uh, loved absolutely loved Chevrolet. I mean, he, he, even in Abadan, Iran, he owned a Chevrolet. <laughs> and when we moved to America in 1972, that's when cars were pretty big. In fact, uh, oh, in yeah. Cindy refers to their car as a land yacht. Yeah, uh, yeah, and they were huge. My father was one of these, these men who just thought, like, a car can never be too big. So we always had these enormous, enormous American-made cars. And my dad, you know, every weekend we'd be out there washing the car and he, he's, just, he's a car guy. I mean, he absolutely loves these Chevrolets. Um, the, the story takes place in the 1970s. I'm looking at my notes here. I want to be sure we're fair to the book. I think we're, we're so intrigued by you and everything around you that we haven't been fair to the book. So let's make sure we don't end the conversation without being fair to the book. So for the listeners, I just went to your website. This is you as a little girl. Right. <laughs> right. It looks like a, a, like a old Kodak moment. Um, so we can learn about and let me let me spell for the one of those awkward school photos that end up on your website when you're an adult. <laughs> <laughs> no, you look cute. What do you mean? You look cute. Um, so so the book is 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 a fun way of looking at what you experienced as as a young in the 1970s as a young person. Right. Right. As an immigrant. And, you know, the great thing about the book is that it has, you know, the US Iran history of the late 70s early 80s. And there's, you know, it's hard to say, okay, we're going to read this book, we're going to learn history, and it's going to be really fun. But it actually, this does happen in the book. I, it's, do, trust me. Do you know what I hope it's happens? And, and I, th I think and your book you might... Know, people don't expect there to be humor when you're you know, learning about U.S.-Iran history, but... Right, I know. And yeah. hostages. I know, I know. But, but think about this for a second. Just think about this for a second. It's books like yours. It's personalities like you that made uh, uh, look we used to be very bad enemies with germany and now we're the best of friends but we used to be very a bad enemies right. with japan now we're the best of friends mm -hmm. right. so maybe this kind right. of dialogue and these kind of things will say oh, okay iran we can be fr we were friends at one time remember yeah a and absolutely so i don't know absolutely. why we, we we were friends and i and i do believe we will be again because the people want it it's just that right you know the government ha have have issues so basically if the politicians could move aside and let regular people talk about absolutely. it absolutely we would fix the issues and in no time that's what you represent regular people with a car with a vacuum cleaner sticking out the back <laughs> exactly. and, and and a hamster and, and my favorite my favorite regular folks <laughs> <laughs> My favorite pet. This is a delightful book. I want to make sure that I give the copy away that was sent to me. Call me if you want it. It's called It Ain't So Awful Falafel. You will love this book. It is fun. And you can share this with your, your young readers in your family. Uh, they will have a good time with this. And I bet you they relate to it. I bet you a young kid, even if he moved here from New Jersey, never stepped foot outside this country, would relate to this. Just just living in a new place, I think, is, is what you can relate to. Don't you think? Right. Well, you know, I think, look, you know, this book takes place in middle school, and, I, and I'll tell you this, I mean, I spend a lot of time on, on, the, on the lecture circuit, so I'm in schools a lot, and I can tell you, middle school is a time when everybody feels like an outsider. Even the kids who look like they fit in so well, they also have their battles. You, you just don't see them. Yeah, yeah, I think you're absolutely right, yeah. And they love these kinds of books because you're sharing with them something that they can relate to, and they, they put themselves in your shoes. Well, see, that's the thing, you know, I, this is the first book I've ever written for a younger audience, because normally I write n adult nonfiction. And, it, you know, it took me seven years to write this book, because I really wanted to get the voice right. And I wanted to make sure that, you know, my, I always imagine whoever's reading my book is an intelligent person. And so I didn't want to write down, because I was writing to a younger audience. Right, right. But one thing that I knew from the beginning was that the one thing that resonates with all readers, whether they're 9 or 99, is authenticity. And yes. that's one thing I strive for always in my writing. And I, and I hope that, that, that this book achieves it. I mean, so far, the reviews have been fantastic. You know, young readers and, and adults 
have, have really related to it. So that makes me very happy because, like I said, it, this book took me seven years to write and 26 versions. Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> you did a great job. Fir- Firuze, uh, thank you so much for being on the show with us today. Come back with the next book and, and uh, be, be safe over in Germany. I will, and I want you to go try a falafel today. Okay. I don't know where I'm going to find one, but I'll, I'll do that. There's one advertised on the billboard on 200. Oh, there is? Yeah. Oh, Robin knows where they sell them. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Firuze. <laughs> this is WOCA Ocala. Fox News Radio. I'm Lillian Wu. In the race for the White House, some considering today's contest key for Republicans. The lines are long at polling places across the state as Indiana decides whether or not Ted Cruz has a shot at blocking Donald Trump. It's like a circuit, so it's almost over. Hopefully we get what we want. This Cruz supporter rallied with him last night in Indianapolis while outside Trump's rally here in South Bend.